Welcome to episode 168 of the Thunder Underground podcast. Trent and Jason here. This week, we've got Chris McCarvel of Max Explosion and Dockin. Nice. Bassist extraordinaire. Yes, definitely. I think you can say extraordinaire. Like people throw that word around loosely sometimes. Yeah, no, this guy, yeah. 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 Well, you know, just right off the bat, one of those, one of the songs, you know, when I was kind of prepping for this, there was one of their, I think it's slower songs where he did this just like real quick walk up. And I was like, whoa, this guy can play. <laughs> and then he sent me that video of his actual bass solo. I mean, that guy, I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't use a pick or nothing. I mean, and he's wailing. He's shredding on that bass. This is great. Yeah. Very glad to have him on yeah. here. We're going to get to that here in just a bit. First, we're going to talk about a couple other things. Yes, let's. A few nights ago, we drove to Oklahoma City mm-hmm. this past weekend to catch our buddies in Scattered Hamlet. Yes. They made their return to Oklahoma. They seem to hit us up at least twice a year, it seems like. Yes. We're lucky enough to be one of their continuous stops. And they had Final Drive with them. Which was fucking badass. Yeah. This is a band that, surprisingly, were pretty lame because we had not seen them yet. Yeah. I, and they played Downtown Lounge several times, and for some reason, something always came up where we didn't go. Yep. They played Rocklahoma last year, and I was going to go, but it was like at one in the morning. Yes. And you know how that goes. Oh, yeah. You, there's, you no, up, you don't, there's no planning. You end up 40 acres away at some yep. jerk-off's campsite <laughs> drinking Bud Light instead of watching Final Drive. Bud Light Orange. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's it's kind of like, you know, there's no crying in baseball. There's no planning in Rocklahoma. Right. Especially after the sun goes down. Yeah. There's just, you, the all goes out the goddamn window, so... <laughs> Yeah, Final Drive has always been, for me, it was always, you know, uh, well, I got to work at fucking five the next morning on a yeah. fucking Sunday or some dumb shit. It just never lined up. So to finally get to see these guys was badass. And they, you know, they lived up to everything we've heard and, and seen about these guys. They were fucking awesome. Not to take away from Scatter Hamlet because we love those guys. But I was just really excited to finally get to see Final Drive. Yeah, I've cranked their newest album a bunch and it's kick-ass album and yes they played several of those songs live they didn't play real long they played like probably 30 40 minutes mm-hmm. and but i mean they jammed it in there and yes they like they described themselves and even one of their t-shirts says southern groove thrash metal yep and as crazy as that sounds put all those words together it's actually a really good description it, of what it these really guys are. is i mean it's the best way to describe it yeah because they are Straight on groove metal, but they got a ton of thrash element in there, you know. And they're from St. Louis, Misery. That's right. That's what their shirt said. Yeah. Don't don't look at me. But to finally get to see them live, like you said, it lived up to yes all our hopes and dreams. Yeah. Yep. And we got to meet a couple of them too. They're great guys. Yeah, and we'll mention that. You know, we're just sitting there watching Scattered Hamlet, yeah. and two of them just came up to you because came, of your shirt. Yeah, I, I had my uh, Tismani shirt on. And they love those guys, and they've been playing with them. And I had just got the shirt. Uh, they were on our uh, our episode with No Legend. Or No Legacy. No Legacy, yes. Yeah. Sorry, my, my bad. Um, and, uh, you know, they were stoked that somebody from, you know, somebody in Oklahoma had the shirt on. And uh, yeah. that was really cool. I mean, they, the, the, the singer and the bass player talked my ear off for like 20 minutes. It was great. Yeah. So that so, was really cool to see, you know. They're like, how you know these guys? And you mentioned No Legacy. And then the singer was like, hold it, you know Eric? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know Eric? It's like, yeah, he's, he's been on like twice, you know. So this is this is kind of what, you know, this is what we do. Right. <laughs> so there you go. Check out Zimani. <laughs> yes, definitely. And like we said, Final Drive, fantastic live band. Just if you like metal. I can't imagine you wouldn't like these guys. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, Scattered Hamlet hits the stage. This was obviously the first tour they've done since last summer. First tour that they were doing without Jake, you know, because he's still in the hospital, unfortunately. And, you know, we spoke to them for a bit, and they said kind of like they've mentioned on their social medias and stuff, you know, he's making progress. It's slow, but it's happening. Yeah. So... Of course, like we've said a million times, best of luck and wishes to him. Definitely. And hope to see him back up there at some point. But in the meantime, these guys did what they always do, and they put on a full-on rock show. Oh, man. 
at OKC City Limits. Yes. And that was, I mean, they played, what, an hour? Yeah. An hour and ten minutes, maybe? Something 15. like that, yeah. And uh, the played last, all the songs you want them to play. Yeah, the last couple of times we saw them, they stuck pretty much to Swamp Rebel Machine, and then they played Shelter. Yeah. You know, and maybe maybe Powder Kegs and Gasoline or something, but this time they played both those, and they played Hillbilly Harmony, and it seemed like they played one or two other yeah. older songs. And, you know, because they've been out on Swamp Rebel Machine now for well over a year. Yeah. And, which is a fantastic album. Oh, man, it's so good. It made our our top list of last year. Of course. So go back and check that thing out if you never have. But, yeah, just these guys command the stage. Adam Newell is a constant. Yeah. Tearing that guitar up. I mean, talk about, it, it's the perfect combination of, like, you know, good, good, like, meaty, classic uh, you know, traditional rock guitar solo and just like a shredder. I mean, it's awesome. He's he's perfect at that. And he plays the blues like Adam Jones. Yes, he does. He definitely does. You got to bend those strings. <laughs> if you you know you, while you're busy learning how to play a million notes a minute, the dudes that are bending the strings are stealing your women. That's right. And that's the fucking truth. <laughs> if anyone knows that, it's Adam Job. That's right. Damn right. But yeah, Adam, Rich, and Adam, you know, these three guys. We've had these guys on a podcast four times now. Oh, yeah. And hopefully we'll get in here soon. Can't say enough good things about their live show. They're just the consummate live band. It's yes. one of those bands that, you know, I could go see them seven days a week and you'd never get bored with it. Never. Hopefully one day we can. <laughs> right. They'll just be the house band in Tulsa, Oklahoma. <laughs> Well, we want to talk about Blackstone Cherry. Let's do it. Let's get into this. Changing a little tune here, but not really, because you just mentioned the blues. Yes. And Blackstone Cherry's new album came out just this past Friday. Sure Family did. Tree. And no, it's not a Zach Brown album, but hey, it, might, it could be, the way it sounds. <laughs> uh, eh, eh. <laughs> I don't know about that, Trent. You're reaching on that one. That that's kind of shows me... Your personal feelings about the no, record? You thought I was going to talk shit about this? No, record. well, no, I know, but I, I'm not going to talk shit. I mean, no, I, I love know. this band. No, and you're not either. No, we both love this band. Yes. So it's they're one of those bands that we've loved long enough that they can stray, and it's not going to make us mad. I'm no, sure there's no. like there's probably bros out there that are sad that there's no, yeah, you know, dance girl or blame it on the boom boom on here. Yeah, but, they're they're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're sitting there with their affliction shirts and their monster energy getting pissed off. <laughs> right. But they put out this EP, what was it was it called Back to the Blues or what was it yeah, called I think so. last year where they did four blues covers and you know it was great. And then I don't know if doing that like really got them in the mood that like this is what we want to do. Yeah. And they put out Family Tree mm -hmm. and it just basically continued that, but it, it obviously sounds more more like Blackstone Cherry than that did, mm -hmm. but it still has way more of that element than any of their previous stuff did. Yeah, I, 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 I've, I've, I saw this coming, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I've told you about this, and just you know, off, you know, record, um, you know, the last record, the last couple records, you could see this coming. They were getting more away from, you know, the the heavier, riffier. It's like that article I tagged you in. Ben Wells said, you know, the guitar player, like, we're not really tuning down as much anymore, you know, we're, we're, we're really, you know, clinging, we're really getting into the Southern and the blues, and that's, I could, I could, I could see that coming maybe one, two records ago. Yeah. And I think, and, and also, you know, they, they've been out on country tours, you know, opening up for, like, bro country bands and stuff. Oh, that's right. And in a way... I have so much disdain for that kind of music, but in a way, I fucking understand that kind of that move to do that. Yeah, it makes sense in a way. Um, and you know, they've they've really kind of they've really clung on to the to the southern and to the classic kind of rock stuff. Um, and it feels like it's like it sucks in a way because I love all the heavy stuff, the riffier stuff, but at the same time, I like that they're. It, because it just didn't seem like it was working uh, in the mainstream, you know. They were, you know, they could go to England and headline arenas, right? But they were coming here, and 
people were still trying to lump him in with the radio rock bands and make him open him for goddamn Nickelback and shit. And it just, I don't know, it just, I I don't know, I don't know. So I kind of throw my hands up on that one, you know? So you know, it's, it's probably, you're right, it's probably a smart move. I mean, this isn't a comparison yeah. style-wise, and I know you don't like the guy, but they're doing what Kid Rock did. Yeah, no, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, exactly. It, it's yeah. worked out great for him, you know? Yeah, he branched but, out. I get that. And finally found that niche kind of area he's in there. Yes. And I think well, that might be what they're doing, you know? Yeah, like, well, what was it? They did that Southern Rock cruise. Yeah, and they did the M3 Southern Rock night with all the Southern Rock classic bands, and I I, I get that, and I think it's a I think it's a, a right move for them. I think it's going to keep them going um, in America, anyways. You know, uh, the UK, you know, they get it because they're not fucking morons, <laughs> but uh, you know, and they they know what you know good rock and roll is. Uh, so and plus a lot of bluesy stuff thrives over there. Yes, that, well, and that's what I'm saying, really. You know, that's why like Jared James Nicholson go over there and. Or whatever, but that's a whole other. We get off on the tangent there. <laughs> but, but the, well, like you said, they they're now in a position. Well, they kind of always have been where they could go open for Five Finger Death Punch or Nickelback, yes. and then they could go open for a Bro Country band, and they could go open for Skinner or Molly Hatchet. Yep. you know, and then they could go open for Kid Rock. You know, yeah. so it's like they're in a good position uh, yeah, music wise. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's you think about it. You know, in in those terms that you just said. You know, love those bands or hate those bands you just listed. When you think about it, it's maybe a little freeing that you have the that sound where you can do all that. You know. Yeah. So, you know, whatever keeps them out of a day job. Fuck yeah, do it. Right. You know, and and, um, and I really like how uh, the singer Chris Robertson. Check out his Instagram. He's always posting like a one minute video of him just wailing on the guitar. Yeah, you know he's really active on that, and he fucking just shreds. So, it, yeah, I mean it's good stuff. Well, you had mentioned that that they kind of stepped away from the riffy stuff and went more blues, and you mm-hmm. mentioned that to me beforehand because you got the album early. Yes, and you know, so I obviously would have heard that if you hadn't told me that, but I went into it knowing that, and I was kind of you know a little bummed at the time because you know I love that first album; it's still my favorite. You know, yeah. I can't. I can't deny it, you know, like maybe someday, you know, Rain King, yeah. Lonely Train, all that stuff. But at the same time, I love all that other stuff, you know, the like from the last album, In My Dreams, or just that kind of more middle-of-the-road bluesy mm-hmm. rock stuff. And when this album kicks off, the second track, Burning, well, I mean, don't skip over the first track because it's great too, but Burning is exactly like all those previous, you know, Blackstone Cherry songs that yeah. were just fucking great. And I hear this song, and that's literally, this could be like one of their ten best songs ever. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I, I love, Bur- yeah, Burning is so good. It's got that catchy chorus. I love their little, uh, the solo, the dual guitar interplay. I fucking love that. Um, yeah, this is a great song. It really yeah. is. It's one of those... Roll yeah. down the windows in the middle of the night while you're driving cross country. No kind of shit, no shit. <laughs> like rolling on was. Yes, yes. <laughs> Emerald Haggard, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, like I said, Bad Habit kicks off. I think Bad Habit and Burning those are great ways to open an album. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Two of the best tracks on here, and then My Last Breath is a, a yes. ballad. Yep. But they've they've really mastered the ballad. They really have over the last few albums, and they really have. They've seemed to have more. Like the last few, like last time I had the Rambler, the album before that had, um, all of, all I really want. Yeah. Is that right? Am I saying that right? No. All I ever wanted. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then, you know, um, uh, things my father said. Yeah. Which, you know, hits home for me. And there, you know, there's no, there's no way you have a dry eye from hearing that song. And, and they do that every album. They've got that. Yeah. And I'm not a ballad guy, but they, they do those ballads in such a way where, you, you, you know, you get choked up a little bit. Yeah. You know, my last breath. I ain't got fucking kids, but it still makes me choke up, you know? Yeah. Like I want to go find a kid and hug it. Yeah. You know? Okay. <laughs> and, and that sounds weird now that I said it out loud, <laughs> but you people know what I mean. He just and watched the Paterno movie, guys. What, you, know. you son of a bitch. <laughs> That's some fucked up shit, man. That's on you. That's okay. on you. <laughs> but yeah, the last couple of albums, like I said, those you songs, motherfucker. <laughs> those songs are more just acoustic based, and this one has yes. that at the beginning, but then it gets, you know, it gets the heavy guitars in there, 
you know, and it kind of kind of adds more of that mm-hmm. in my blood element or something. Yeah. And, you know, just continuing on. Fucking James Brown. Um, yeah. Ain't, ain't nothing in the room going to stay still when that song comes on. Right. That's a cliched statement, but it, it fits here, so whatever. Yeah. yeah, towards the end of this, like, Ain't Nobody, James Brown, and Get Me Over You. Yeah. I, I love all those. And the only... I need to, you know, listen again. I've listened to this thing three times now. Yeah. But the song um, Southern Fried Friday Night is the closest thing to yes the to, to those the typical radio one. Yeah, you know, to, the, to the blame it on the boom booms yeah. and the white trash millionaires. But it's not it's not totally that way, but it's got that feel. It's got yes. the voice box, all the stuff, you know, like. And you mentioned that you could totally hear a bro country band redoing that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, Move down. I need a woman. You could totally hear a bro country band do that one too. Yep. yep. So I, I bet know. we do within the next year. Yeah. George Lyon already redid some, Stay, so they're going to redo one of these yep, too. Some some fucking goddamn backwards baseball hat wearing bro country fuck is going to fuck some song up that they did, and they're going to slaughter it. And all these fucking stupid girls in the sundresses and the boots that think that Chris Stapleton isn't country are going to love this fucking song. And this band's going to make a million fucking dollars while Blackstone Cherry's still over here, you know, playing fucking the Vanguard or some shit. <laughs> well, no, if they redo it and make that money, Blackstone well, make, Cherry's going to Yeah, they'll benefit. make that money, true. So, But, I, but <laughs> I, I'm bitter, sorry. <laughs> Hey, those guys couldn't hit country with a baseball bat. God damn right they couldn't hat. with their backwards Who's hats. That? Shooter Jennings. Shooter Jennings, exactly. And he's been on this podcast. Listen to it. That's my favorite episode of all time, I'll say it. It is. No, it's, nice. it's stellar. <laughs> but no, I mean, so overall, I mean, it's not. Uh, I, I got to say. You got to mention I, Dancing in the Rain. That's what I was about to say. We have to talk about that because Warren Haynes is on it and he's fucking badass. Yeah. And that was great. You know, his yeah. voice mixed with Chris's worked great. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, overall, I mean, it's a great album. If you like Blackstone Cherry, it's not like you're going to dislike it, unless you just like those aforementioned songs we mentioned or something. But even people that like the heavier Blackstone Cherry stuff surely like this kind of stuff, too. You know? mm-hmm. so, oh, yeah, definitely. For sure. Yeah. So check it out, Blackstone Cherry Family Tree. All right, let's get into this. Chris McCarvel. Doc and Max Explosion. Listen yeah. to this. Yeah, Max Explosion is a three-piece band out of Connecticut. Features Chris along with Jimmy and BJ, who are also in House of Lords. Yes. And Chris was actually in House of Lords for a while. He's not anymore. But the three of them form this band on the side, and it's a great melodic rock band. It's kind of got, you know, it's not really like a 80s glam band or anything, but it's got elements of that melodic stuff, but it also has like elements of like your Aerosmith 70s style stuff, you know? Yeah. And all three of them are exceptional musicians. You hear it in all these songs. Oh, man. Hands down. Yeah. Like I said, top of the show, this guy can play bass like a motherfucker. Yeah. So get on YouTube and Google Chris McCarville of Demon Will. That's the name of that bass solo. It's badass. Yeah, it is. And like we said, he's in Dokken. He's been there for a while. And in this interview, we talk about all this stuff, Max Explosion and Dokken and a lot of other stuff he's got going on. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. So yeah, let's get into this. Chris McCarvel. Quite a few docking shows over the past week. How'd all those go? Um, that's a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's always uh, it's always an experience. It's uh, I don't even know what to compare it to really in real life. It's it's just very very extreme. There's a there's a lot of I mean, we fly and do weekends and come back and it's uh, you know, we don't really like tour exactly. We just do weekends. So um, it's great that way because you can actually have a life now. You don't have to be away from your family and everything. And so that's cool. But um, the shows are always different. It's like you never know what we're going to run into. Like, um, you know, sometimes there's sound issues with things. And it's, you know, like 
you don't want to seem negative and complain about sound, but if it doesn't sound good, it's hard to be into it and do a good show. And then there's the problem of trying to communicate what's wrong to someone doing sound while you're trying to play at the same time. Like, so it's, it's kind of like, you know, like imagine juggling a whole bunch of stuff and then trying to, you know, sing something at the same time or do, you know, whatever. It's like juggling cats basically. (laughs) So I guess with uh, these weekend flying dates, you're always kind of at the mercy of the house sound guy. Yeah. I mean, and that's, it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing either. It's just everybody does it differently. And, you know, there's always communication breakdowns with things. And, but it seems to, it's really fun to go out and do these shows with Doc. And cause it seems like it's just like when I first got in it, I was kind of, I'm coming from playing in the house of Lords before, which is sort of like a regimented thing on stage. And, um, Docking is kind of like being in an 80s rock band mixed with the Sex Pistols. Like, <laughs> it just goes out and tears shit up. I mean, it's it's really, like, it's a lot of fun to do. And it's not always perfect, but it's dangerous, and that's really, really fun. So it's, you know, you don't really know what's going to happen. It could fall apart. It could be the best thing you ever saw. It just, I, I don't know what it's going to be, but I definitely like doing it a lot. It's cool. Well, when you're when you're playing out and, and doing the docking thing, do you, do you have to pretty much stay stay to the parts, or can you kind of add your own kind of feel to it? Or, well, I think, I mean, I, I I've been doing it a couple of years now, so it's sort of like I'm kind of finding what works. Mm-hmm. And when I first came in, I was very conservative just because I wanted to make sure, you know, I kind of look at it. It's like my job to try to make everybody sound good. It's not, you know, my job to make myself sound great. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I'm there sort of su- to support and, and that kind of thing. So I just kind of came into it with that attitude. And then I started feeling it out and seeing where I could do things. And, you know, everyone said what they liked or did. Cause these guys have all, you know, John Levin's the newest member other than me and he's been in there 20 years. So he's like, you know, been in there longer than George Lynch has. So they know live what they want to hear. And, you know, basically I just sort of, you know, throw stuff up on the wall and see what sticks. And if it sticks, cool. And if not, then I just, you know, yeah, change it. So it's not, you know, it's not like they sit there and go over every single note and be like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do that. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's very, uh, it, it's not militant at all. It's, it's more like we just go up and try to make it feel really good together. And that's, I, I like that mentality a lot. Well, coming in as someone that was, I'm sure sure you were a fan before you came in. What are some of your favorite songs to play live? Um, it's funny. It's like I, I definitely like Dream Warriors a lot, and I, that's not really my favorite Dawkins song, but I like to play it live because it just really translates. And and that's the thing I, I really do notice. Like it's it's given me a new appreciation for for Dawkins music in general because I, I used to like it. Like I knew most of it coming into it. Like it didn't take a lot of homework, but hearing how it works live. I mean, it's, you know, there's, there's me, there's guitar, there's drums and some of us sing and that's it. There's nothing else. And those songs fill up the whole room, like no problem. So they're, they're very, very well crafted songs. I mean, that's, you know, I didn't even really realize how good they were until we really, you know, started playing. I'm like, wow, these songs are really smart the way they're set up. So lots of them. I mean, there's, uh, like in my dreams is just an automatic. It, it that song is just set up so good, it just sounds great live. I mean, you, you really can't go wrong with that. But I mean, it's kind of cool because I mean, I used to listen to Dokken in high school and see everybody walking around with the concert shirts and stuff. And then I'm thinking sometimes I'm like, oh, I, I get to go do this now. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I don't know. Into the fire is really good. Uh, just great when we come out. I mean, it's it's all the you know like the hunter. Any of the, the hits that like you know I've seen on MTV or you've seen on MTV, it's those are a lot of fun live. It's really cool. I enjoy it. Well, speaking of live shows, I saw Max Explosion has this melodic rock fest coming up, and then of course we're going to be seeing you guys out at Rocklahoma. Yeah, yeah, uh, we're really psyched. It's cool. I mean, it's you know it seems like it's probably ridiculous trying to do this in these other bands like the you know BJ and Jimmy are, are in House of Lords are actually on their way to Europe right now with House of Lords. But we're all Connecticut guys, and we've done Max kind of, you know, when we've had off-season stuff, that's when we started Max. And it's just, 
sort of taken off in spite of itself. It's like we got together and we were going to do covers and we got lazy and decided to write our own songs instead and did a show and people really liked it a lot. So we're like, oh, I guess we got to keep doing this. This is good too. So <laughs> I kept, you know, we're like, oh, let's make a video. I'm like, I, you know, I had, I'm like, oh, I can make a video. Sure I can, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I went into it and made a video and came out good. People liked it. So I was like, okay, I guess we got to do more of these. So, I mean, it's sort of, sort of just happened, you know, it was it wasn't like we were out to try to make a great, you know, original rock band. It's just seemed to head in that direction. I'm not saying we're the greatest rock band ever or anything. It's just, you know, seemed to have given its own legs, you know, that's sort of a, you know, I'm really happy doing it. It's, it's forced me to learn how to sing way better than I ever have. Like I've, I was only a backup singer before this. And um, I ended up taking lessons from an opera singer um, whose name is Lucia Palmieri. And uh, she just kicked my ass all over the place. It was crazy for like a year and a half. And it's just helped so much. I mean, it's I can't thank her enough. <laughs> did, uh, did you know you wanted to sing lead or did it just kind of happen like that? You couldn't find anybody else. <laughs> well, it, I mean, it's we were we were in Hungary with House of Lords and we were sound checking. And we just started playing one of the songs and I started singing and Jimmy, our guitar player is like, dude, you should sing. He's like, you can totally sing. Like that sounds fine. So I'm like, I, all right, <laughs> I guess, you know, sorry about that. That's That's all right. Right. I guess when it gets calls, it knocked me out. <laughs> that was Jimmy calling probably, uh, you know, okay. getting mad at me. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I kind of lost track. What was going on? Are you just talking about how Jimmy said you should sing? Oh, yeah, he's like, you know, why don't you sing lead? And they recorded some music. This is when we were first starting Max, and they they threw it at me, and I, I started writing because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I started writing lyrics, and just went, okay, I got to really, you know, work on this. And that ended up turning into our Devil's Locomotive song, which we have a video for, and you know, kind of started off our stuff with that, and everybody liked it, and we just kind of kept going. And then I had to, you know, learn how to do this for real. Yeah. <laughs> So, but I love it now. I really do. I, it's almost like I, I'd much rather sing lead and play bass than just play bass. And I love to play bass. I mean, that's all I've ever wanted to play. So that's kind of a big deal. That was one of my questions was singing and playing bass at the same time. Is it something once you started doing it, does it feel natural now? Yeah, it does. I think it's one of those things that people make it harder than it is. It's like you just got to pretend it's not hard to do. <laughs> I mean, I think that's, that helps because it's, I mean, if I really stopped and thought about what the hell I'm doing, it's, it's probably, you know, like to sit down and try to analyze it, it, it's probably very, very difficult, but I just try to, you know, kind of think about staying in key with the voice, stay in key with the bass and try to stay in time with BJ and just, you know, hope it holds together. It's, it's gotten now where I can kind of sing one thing and play something completely different. And it's, once I do it, you know, 10 times I kind of have a grip on it and it's not perfect, but you know, I, I enjoy that sort of, you know, it may, probably gives me chameleon eyes. Like I'm looking through different ways, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, talk about the, the writing process. How do you guys go about that? Is it the three of you all together or is it, do you bring in ideas separately? Well, it's morphed over the last couple of years. I mean, we've been around probably like five years now, I guess. And when we started out, we were used to being sidemen for other bands. And, um, so originally we thought, okay, like, you know, Jimmy, write a guitar riff, write a bunch of stuff, and then I'll take it and I'll try to write lyrics to it. And I'll try, you know, we'll piece it together that way. Yeah. I mean, originally we were piecing stuff together with, with demos and that kind of stuff. And we quickly found when we came time to mix the shortcomings of that. And it was, you know, basically everybody trying to fill up every available space possible. And it just kind of got messy and, Everybody, you know, no one wants to change your parts and it's, you know, we just ended up kind of stalemating a bunch of times. So BJ and I talked and we're like, look, let's try to, you know, kind of come up with stuff together, try it that way. And then we can kind of help the arrangements happen a little better. And as soon as we did that, it's like a whole new world. And that's actually after our second release. So this third one we're working on now is just, I'm, I'm really, really excited about it. I'm sure everybody says that, but for us, it's some pretty major progress song-wise. I definitely attribute that to working together on stuff. 
Well, both you and Jimmy yep. on, on a lot of songs, I noticed both of your sounds are up front. Like you can hear your bass as easy as you can hear the guitar. And well, like how yeah, do you go I mean, about that's... that as far as building the, the songs to work that way? Um, well, all of us are very painted, which, you know, makes for an interesting mixing progress in our process. It's, you know, like I've done a lot of recordings where bass is sort of like normal bass. And I feel like I have more to say with bass. Like, I, I just think it's something that is as important as anything else. So I want to hear it. So, you know, we fight and argue and cry and, <laughs> and that's what it is. It's like, I, you know, if, if you care about anything, you fight for it. And it's, you know, if, and I'm not saying I win every fight. It's just that, you know, sometimes, and that's why we work together now when we write is like, okay, this part, you know, Jimmy comes up with a really dense, heavy guitar part. It's like, okay, let's everybody back out of the way for that to happen now. Instead of all of us doing that, we all give him space to do that. And we try to make that, you know, for any of us, if BJ has a big drum thing, we try to give him space. And that's sort of where we've ended up from what you're talking about is like trying to get everything as loud as we possibly can all the time. And not always seeing eye to eye about it. It's uh, hopefully going to be a little, you know, more varied and interesting and listenable. <laughs> so I just feel like mostly what we've done so far has been so dense musically that it's a bit much. So see what happens. Yeah. So, so you were talking about this, the new stuff you're working on. When can we expect to follow up? You think? Um, well, <clears throat> haven't rushed it i mean that's mm. that's the thing we're, we're we do a lot of recordings and stuff and, and we could put something out in a couple months if we really wanted to it's just we'd rather make it really good than do it really fast so we're taking the time like we're trying these things out live and we play shows and tweaking them out and you know we, we don't really have any obligation to do it fast so we kind of feel like okay this is the one we really want to get out there and really push so let's just you know do the best we can instead of as fast as we can. So I'm sure everybody says that too, but I'm, you know, hopefully over the summer we should have something out. Mm -hmm. So how much have you guys got written so far? Um, I'd say in, well, we have more than an album's worth of songs, just not all of them are finished. Okay. So we're probably going to write quite a bit more than an album and kind of pick our best from there. And that's, sort of we've, we've kind of ramped up our writing recently anyways just because it's just seems to be i don't know we're just more focused on it <laughs> so and, and it's really funny because when we do get together we usually end up writing something on the spot and we all really like it yeah it's just we've done that so many times we're kind of like okay is this really a good song should we continue working on this <laughs> or should we do this or so at least we're not hurting for material at all it's just we're trying to filter and kind of sift through everything and get the best stuff we can for us. Mm -hmm. Am I putting you to sleep? <laughs> no, no, not at all. This, this okay. is the stuff we like. We like the, the you know, the in-depth kind of stuff. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you just mean I don't know. No, not at all. So, um, so, you know, a little bit ago you said something about, you know, playing bass is all you ever wanted to do. Um, why was it bass? I mean, other than guitar or drums, you know, everyone has that kind of story, so. Yeah, I mean, my thing was I, I grew up around early MTV. That's just how old I am. So okay. I saw all like new wave stuff and I, there was a lot of heavy bass music at the time. I mean, it wasn't rock or metal. It was new wave, but it was very loud bass. And it was just like that was powerful to me. And I used to hold my tape recorder up to the TV. And <laughs> when I went back and listened to this, once I started playing, I realized everything I was recording was like really heavy bass, like Frankie Goes to Hollywood or Banana Ram or anything that had like loud bass. I was really drawn to it. Even uh, Kaja Gugu, those <laughs> crazy guys. So it seems silly, but I remember taking that stuff to my teacher when I was 12 years old and going, look, I want to play this. And he's like, yeah, but that's a synth. That's not, you know, that's programmed. I'm like, I don't care. That's what I want to sound like, you know? Yeah. So shut up, kid, you know? So, <laughs> but in learning how to play that stuff, it kind of, you know, kind of gave me a head start on you know, the what I can do now, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like that. And later on, I got into Danny Elfman and like uh, classical orchestration and all the Batman sounding stuff. I mean, I really like that a lot too. So that's, if you take all that stuff and then put it in a rock band, that's, that's sort of where I'm coming from yeah. at least. <laughs> yeah. We, we, uh, 
We watched one of your uh, bass solos on YouTube, and man, you're doing some crazy runs. That was really cool. Ah, uh, cool, nice. Yeah. I mean, I've done some Impressed. with Dokken that are not always stellar, but it's yeah. you know they give me an opportunity to try some stuff, and I always try to do something or other. And you know, like with Max, we have a there's actually a bass solo song that I recorded that's very it's it's based on classical music and christmas carols and all this different stuff but it, it sounds you know it's just trying to do something that i hadn't heard before and i i was big into racing bicycles so i like adrenaline sounding stuff and i just tried to combine everything i like and put it to base you know yeah. <laughs> well when you mentioned the new wave stuff and then danny elfman what was it that first got you into rock and the harder stuff oh uh, people that's it's really like that's basically who asked me to join their band was rock people like because and I liked long hair so I guess I looked you know my friend was like dude you dress like a cop but you're not a cop I'm <laughs> like well I don't know <laughs> but I guess that's you know when I was a little kid I wanted long hair I thought that was cool and just you know I, I just never was able to get a new wave band together I guess and the metal and rock people seem to you know for bass you put that in a metal context it's pretty cool I guess yeah yeah. So that's, you know, I've just kind of tried to do the best I can with what I have. You know, it's like mm -hmm. try to seize opportunities. If it's a metal band, like my old metal band, X Factor X, those guys are total metalheads. They love it. You know, that's their thing. I don't like metal, but I love those guys. And we, we tried to, you know, do something creative with, you know, what we had to work with. Yeah. So I guess it works somehow, you know. And I, I love to play heavy stuff. It's just not really what I listen to. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I don't really need your input at this point. You can go in. <laughs> yeah, we've had a few interviews where Jason's dog chimes in as well. Yeah. So, yeah, don't worry. <laughs> it's not the first the first time. <laughs> gotcha. So, yeah, I, it's it's going to be interesting doing the Rocklahoma thing because I did do that years ago with Doc. And, and that was like a, you know, it's, it's really a, a huge show and stuff and to come back with max should be a lot of fun i mean I'm, I'm really looking forward to it should be cool yeah it should be great yeah do you know which guy which day you guys are playing yeah we're playing sunday nice. okay okay and i think we're on at 6 30 something like that we have i've read and denise actually told me that you build bass guitars is this something yeah. you do just for yourself or do you do it for others well, this is another, it's a, it's another opportunity thing. It's sort of like, you know, there weren't companies climbing over themselves to build me shit for free. So I was like, okay. I, <laughs> and one day someone actually did contact me about making a base. And I was like thinking about it. I'm like, you know, I'm like, I've, I've, I'm a graphic artist too. That's been my day job. So I do album. I actually did an album cover for Doc in between, but, um, so I figured, look, I've been a graphic artist. I play instruments. I've been doing it a long time. There's no reason I can't figure out how to do this. So I got on YouTube for like four days and that's all I did was just study making guitars and blue theory and just, you know, I just absorbed as much as I could and I tried to buy as few tools as I could cause I was broke. And, um, I decided to, you know, I, I play in some bands. So I asked around, does anyone, you know, want to, want a bass? <laughs> <laughs> and because I do the artwork, I can render them before I build them. Yeah. So I can kind of show people what, you know, like what they want. They can figure it out in the computer ahead of time. And then I just build that. So that worked and I built about three of them and that paid for all the tools to do it. And basically that made it so I could make my own. And, uh, that's, that's really all I do. I, I actually own a business also, a uh, screen printing company. So that's kind of a full-time gig. So building bases is something that I really have a lot of time for. It's just nice to, get off of the computer sometimes and, you know, use actual tools and it, it kind of chills me out, you know? <laughs> yeah. And you can, you can build them for exactly how you want them. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> my thumb's bent backwards, so that's made it difficult to play for me, like a regular bass. Like I always have to mod them out really weird. Yeah. So to do that on a regular bass takes about as much work as making one. So I was just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to yeah. start making them. Like if someone can build it. I could build it. <laughs> <laughs> but when you built your first one did you base it off of one that you liked or is it how did you go about that yeah i mean my favorite bass when i was younger was uh, a cheesy ibanez 707 which looks like a steve i guitar but it's a bass yeah 
And I just loved it to death. And it got stolen out of my car, my friend's car in uh, Hollywood when we lived there. His gem guitar got stolen too. We were really bummed. So I ended up buying a couple more of them over the years and stuff. And I was just like, you know what? I'm like, I really like this shape and everything. I'm like, let me see if I can make one. You know, so I figured if I could copy something, I'd know if I had any technique or not. And I made one and it fit the neck and, you know, worked fine. I'm like, oh my God, this isn't that hard. So I just kind of went from there. And this year was the first time I made a neck from scratch. And, you know, there's some mistakes, but it's, uh, it works. And I actually have to make another one for it because it's the truss rods bending out of the back of it, but it's lasted through these last few docking shows. <laughs> So, and that's, what's great is I get to, you know, like I get to do my own market research. I know what works. I get to yeah. change. I've, I've researched a lot about electronics and really tried to design things that make sense for rock music. And, you know, it's, I, I really do enjoy doing it. It's fun to you know, fly a lot. So I have time to sit there and try to figure it out. Like what I'm trying to do. And well, you mentioned album covers. Is there, is that an ongoing thing you do or is it just on occasion when someone asks you to? Yeah, it's pretty it, I don't go after it necessarily. It's like I don't really consider myself that great of an artist. Like I'm okay, but I'm not like, you know, my brother is a fine artist. He's an oil painter. He's excellent. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a different thing. Like I'm sort of good at like photo bashing. Like I'll just throw a bunch of stuff together and I can arrange it so it looks kind of cool and you know, I'm I'm pretty good under pressure where for example, the, the docking album I did was called Broken Bones, and Don asked for all this stuff, and I did a whole bunch of different variations, and it got down to the last day it was due, and I had 24 hours, and he goes, I ah, just do a skull of crossbones, Chris, and that's it. We're done. <laughs> so I had to do it, you know, like just in 24 hours, so I just, you know, had to make it happen. Yeah. Well, you mentioned but, making uh, that, that first video as well. Is that some? Have you made all the videos yourself? Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, I've had help when I don't know what the hell I'm doing, which is most of the time. But for example, if you go look up Devil's Locomotive, that's our first Max Explosion song. That was our first video. We actually filmed that at my old shop. And so it's a, basically a t-shirt company <laughs> in the back. <laughs> but I mean, we brought our lights in and, you know, I just read online. I kept reading about how videos are made, how professional lighting is done. And we didn't have professional equipment or gear or budget or anything. But, you know, with YouTube and the Internet, you can just learn so much. Exactly. It's, you know, just go read and take some time. I mean, you can, you know, I'm not saying it's that great either, but it's, you know, for what we had, I feel pretty proud of that, that it's, you know, I have like $60 camera, $100 editing software, and it looks like a video. Yeah. Trained a couple friends to film it because obviously we can't film it at the same time as being in it. Yeah. And, you know, like BJ knows a lot about lighting now, like he knows how to you know, we know what angles work and, you know, it's silly stuff. Like you wouldn't think to film a drummer, you'd want to film them. You need to show them actually hitting the drums. Like if you don't show that, it just looks like this, you know, octopus flailing around. It doesn't look like anything. <laughs> so, you know, you know we, we've gotten better at understanding what needs to go in the camera to make a good video. That's so it's pretty cool. I like doing it. I actually did the, uh, the return from the East. Oh, uh, okay. Doc and, original members concert DVD. That was, that uh -huh. took a long time last year. Cause that's 13 songs plus like 45 minutes of backstage stuff. And you know, like basically it's audio from different sources and video from different sources and, you know, just lining every top and trying to make it as cohesive as possible. And it's, you know, some cameras are like low res and some are super high res. And Sometimes I didn't have the right files for things, and it just was, you know, it's I, it, months and months of work on that thing. Wow. So that was, that's a pretty major learning process for me. So was that the first uh, DVD like that you had done, like concert film, basically? Oh, yeah. Yep, <laughs> totally. I mean, Don actually saw the Crazy Hot video. That's that's kind of how I'm I, – I was in Dokken in 2008. We did a uh, the Poison Sebastian Bach tour. And uh, that was huge, totally huge. And I'd gotten that gig from uh, a guy that did artwork and licensing for uh, OCC. His name is Jim Paytas, good friend of mine. And um, he's friends with John Levin. They did some work and basically, you know, he introduced me to John basically and I ended up going on that tour. In the meantime, um, they got an L.A. bass player because Dawkins L.A. based and it's just easier for him that way. But I stayed in touch with Don the whole time. Yeah. So – 
once I started doing videos with Max, he, he called me and he's like, look, how'd you do this video? And I said, well, I filmed it on the phone you're talking to me on. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so we just kind of started talking from there and, you know, I guess I, 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 the reason I'm kind of going into all this stuff is that if you're interested in a music career, I think it really helps to diversify it and try to make yourself valuable in a lot of ways. It's, yeah. Yeah. That not- seems to uh, just be helpful, you know. There's so much going on these days and there's so much content and, you know, just overturn. I, you're definitely on to something there for sure. I, yeah. I mean, even Don said that. He's like, you know, I can find a bass player at Subway. And he's right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's just sort of, you know, what else do you bring to the table? And yeah, if you're exactly. an aspiring musician, it's like you really got to, you know, do what you can to be valuable, you know. So. And it's helped too, because for Max, it really keeps our overhead low. Like it's, I can do all our merch. It's like, we don't have a lot of, you know, the, the band doesn't make millions of dollars, so we we can't spend millions of dollars. So it it helps to be able to do everything in house. And that's sort of, you know, that's what, that's, that's what happens when you get to be our age. (laughs) (laughs) We're like, wow, you guys are trailblazers. No, that means we have gray hair. (laughs) Well, besides a possible album this summer, what else can we expect from Max Explosion over the next year? Well, we definitely have a couple tricks up our sleeve. Um, Definitely more live shows, definitely videos. And that's always interesting because um, we all, we, we, our our crazy hot video, I think is our favorite one. Although Famous is actually a a pretty good video that we like a lot. So we're always trying to top it. Like we don't want to just do what we, you know, something that's going to be less than what we did. And we set the bar really high for ourselves. So it's, it's tough to, you know, we actually filmed a whole video and I scrapped it cause it wasn't as good wow. as our other videos. So, you know, we're kind of set on trying to make, like we just figure if it's really good, it'll last, you know, we don't want to make disposable music. Like we want to make something that you actually want to listen to more than a couple times. Right. So that's really, you know, may not be that interesting in the process of it, but at least it's, you know, that's the desired result. Random note. I don't know if you remember when you guys played Tulsa last year. It was probably about a year ago. Um, so the Oklahoma. Girl, yeah, Janet Jordan, the guitarist yeah. got up on stage yeah, and played yeah. guitar with you guys. Was, uh, yeah, she was, I'm trying to, she had, did she have a blue guitar? Yeah. Or something? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a yes. friend of ours and just she wanted to give uh, her a shout yeah, we did In My Dreams for Soundcheck. I think they, I sang it. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, she's really good. What What's she doing? Oh, she plays for Down for Five, and they've also got a cover band they do as well. Nice. So you got to diversify. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's that word again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool, man. Well, we're looking forward to seeing it at Rocklahoma, and we appreciate you taking the time to do this with us. Absolutely, man. Anytime. Thank All you. Right. There you go. Chris McCarville of Max Explosion. He's the bassist and vocalist of that band, and he's also the bass player for Dokken. Yes. Thank you to Denise Dawson for helping facilitate that for us. Always. And of course, thank you for Chris for taking the time out of his evening to talk to us. Of course. Like I mentioned earlier, get on YouTube and look up their music. You can also buy both their albums, Dirty Angel and Forever, on Amazon. Look up the Demon Will solo. That thing's badass. Yeah, This guy's just phenomenal. And look him up on Facebook. That's Max with two X's. Explosion. Give him a follow. Of course, while you're doing that, follow us. Please do. Yeah. It's The Thunder Underground on Facebook. We're also on YouTube and Instagram, at The Thunder Underground. Twitter is THNDR, UNDR Ground. And you can listen to this podcast pretty much anywhere podcasts are heard. Google, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, all that great stuff. You can also listen to us at TheThunderUnderground.com. Jason's got a lot of reviews he's wrote that are up there as well. And you can listen at soundcloud.com backslash thunder dash underground. That's where all this stuff's at. And also every Monday night on 102.7 WSNR.com, we go on at 7 p.m. Central on there. And if you like Dockin' and Max Explosion, surely you like Great White, Warrant, Europe, Firehouse, Trickster, Bullet Boys, Lillian Axe, Tyketo. Am I forgetting anybody? I don't. I think, you, I, th- I think you got all those. 
Yeah, if you like this, you'll like those. There's no fucking doubt. And the reason we mention those is because all those a member of all those bands has been on this podcast. Yes. Mark Kendall from Gray White has been on here twice. Great guy to talk to. Oh man, that guy's that guy's awesome. Yeah. Mark Gus Scott from Trickster. That dude is a That guy's a trip. Yeah. He's a lot. Yeah. He's a he's a good guy to talk to as well. Over the top, but you gotta love it. Yep. But yeah, all that stuff, if you like it a little heavier. We've had on guys from Death Angel. We've had on Sid Falk, who was formerly of Overkill. We've had on Reed Mullen of COC. John Connolly of Seven Dust. Both Tony and Gumby from Battlecross have been on here four times combined. Yes. Like we mentioned, Scattered Hamlet's been on here a bunch. Um, Kirk Winstein. Yeah. From Crowbar. Can't forget him. No. He was also in Down at one point. Yes. And Down features one Mr. Jimmy Bauer. Who has been on the podcast before yeah. as well. His band, I Hate God and Super Joint. Speaking yeah. of Super Joint, Stephen Taylor has also Steven. been on here as well. And, and Child yeah. Bite. And Phil and someone was on here for 30 seconds. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and Child Bite, that's a good one we yes. don't mention enough. Yes, that was a great one. Yeah, that was a fun one. We've had on guys, if you like the Stoner Doom stuff like Crowbar, we've had on guys from Truck Fighters and King and The Sword. Spirit um, Caravan. Yeah. Obsessed. Custom Black, a great band out of Kansas City. Yep. Who, speaking of Custom Black, they were playing at Thunder Underground Fest. That's right. Thunder Underground Fest. Recently announced yes. October 19th and 20th in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the Shrine. It features Custom Black and 16 other artists. Yes. I don't really want to say them because I don't have to listen in front of me and I'll forget someone and feel like an asshole. But, you know, <laughs> our posters on all the socials, go check it out. It's going to be a great weekend. Can't wait. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know it's kind of far a ways off, but we, we just want to start talking about it now. It's going to be fun. Yeah, put it on your calendar. And if you're anywhere in driving distance to Tulsa, get out here because we've got bands from Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Fort Smith, Kansas City, where else? Studgard, Arkansas, which is out near Little Rock, I yep. think, and then down south Oklahoma. So just get out here. 17 people are going to be performing. We've got Sprout performing solo, and then we've got 16 other bands playing. That's right. It's going to be badass. All right. Does that cover everything for 168? I think, I think that about does it. Yeah. The the beautiful bean footage was rolled. <laughs> it was rolled. I do need to mention this week is Judas Priest week. Oh, man. Next time we talk to you, we'll have seen we'll Judas have Priest, seen Judas Saxon, Priest. and Blackstone. Blackstone. <laughs> God damn it, Trent. Hey, we talked about it earlier. I know. Black, Black Star Riders. There we go. So, Yeah. Which, if you have not ever listened to Black Star Riders, do yourself a favor. favor, They're a great hard rock band. They're awesome. Formerly, basically, was it four of the members that were in Thin Lizzy there at the end? Yeah. You know, and, of course, Scott Gorm from Thin Lizzy, Damon Johnson and Ricky Ward. But, yeah, check them out. And, of course, the Mighty Saxon. Yes. And the even mightier Judas Priest. I can't fucking wait. It's going to be a great show. And before that, you're going to see... uh, Marty Stewart, and I'm, I'm going to see David Byrne. That's right. I'm going to go see Marty Stewart and his fabulous superlatives that's right. tomorrow night at Kane's Ballroom because I fucking love country music. See, that's just shows our, yeah, our diversity. Our diversity. And that's real country music, not douche country music. Well, you said you love country music. I'd assume that means that you love um, Kenny Chesney. Well, I assume that means that you're a fucking asshole. That's the truth. That was a little harsh. I'm sorry. I didn't mean <laughs> that. But... No, Kenny Chesney is not real country. He's not country at all, and that's not what I'm talking about. All right. But you get to go see David Byrne Wednesday, which is going to be fucking awesome. Yeah. Which, again, is another way that it shows our diversity. Yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, it's at the uh, Criterion, right? Yeah, and I've still nice. never been there. That'll be my first time. Okay, okay. And I've never seen him before. Tracy has, so. Yeah, but well, this will be good. Looking forward to it. He's playing... You know, I've looked at his set list, and he plays five or six Talking Head songs. Really? You know, mixed in with his, all his solo stuff and a few covers, so there'll at well, least be some stuff I know. You may <laughs> ask yourself, how did you get here? That's right. You're there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That probably does it. Yes. Till next time. Thunder Underground, y'all. Thunder Underground, y'all.